Hey guys, welcome back again. Andres here, AKA Chef Momo. So last time we were here with this crab bisque, we finished with, see how it looks. This is when it's cold, chill overnight. We're gonna turn this into two dishes today. And I have another dish for you tomorrow also. But for now, let's start with the first two dishes. I'm gonna do one pasta dish with shrimp and one shrimp with bell peppers and assorted vegetables, so like a keto friendly, if you're looking for uh, gluten free or pasta free, grain free, I'm gonna show you that also, okay? So first we're gonna start with five pieces of bacon. You wanna slice it up really good. It's nice long pieces. Thin balong. I'm gonna toss these in and saute these guys. And really quick, while we're working on that, let's make sure both our pot, we're gonna use a pot like this side to saute everything in. So make sure that's nice and medium high temperature. Also guys, I didn't show you this, but for the pasta dish, you wanna get that water ready uh, first. That's the first thing you wanna do. So in the back corner, I have a pot, a nice big pot so, that's, so the noodles have a chance to really spread their wings and, and boil. Pasta's back there, means the water back there for you, nice and hot, pre-salted also. Um, and salt accordingly. I think most times you can do like, a, I don't know, a gallon or half a gallon, or a ga say a gallon of water in a pot. And I would do like maybe, I don't know, a tablespoon of salt or like half a tablespoon of salt. Just want to flavor that pasta there. Bacon is done. I like a lot of bacon for this dish, guys. And a good thing about bacon is you don't need to put any other fats with it. Bacon has a lot of fats, you can see, so it does its own like sauteing for it. Put that right in the pot. Nice sizzle going there. I'm gonna move it around so this thing all poked up together. I have about six ounces, six, 6.5, six and a half ounces of pasta here. Pretty much a nice handful. This will make you about two dishes, serving two. If you wanna do more, you can upgrade it for a larger size family. As you know, pasta is super economical, it's like 99 cents for a big, a big box. So it's shareable for the family also, and great for leftovers. I don't know about you, but I can break mine up. So I'm gonna break it, and then toss it right in that water. I have like a little pasta fork spool thing here, so we're gonna use that to break it up as it's boiling and cooking. And cover that bad boy back up so it cooks a little faster. I have some onions, red bell peppers, and green bell peppers. We use all three of these and saute them with that bacon, especially once that bacon gets nice and crispy. It renders a lot of fat. So I both off first, right down the middle. Makes it easier to peel, guys. A lot easier to peel. Some people are always like struggling with peeling onions because you don't know how many layers to take off. If you cut the front and back end off, it makes it a lot easier. I'm gonna need half an onion. I probably won't use all this, but we can start with the base of half an onion. No special cuts this time, guys. We're going straight line, straight down. Nice long slices. About a quarter of an inch. Should be enough right there. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna set this to the side because the bacon is not quite ready to be used yet. So I did about a quarter of an onion for this recipe, right? Bell peppers. Slice the end off. Slice the back off. We're gonna seed out these, take out these seeds. So go around and grab these seeds right on out of there. There we go. Nobody wants that. Right in half. And then we're gonna long pieces also. So everything's gonna be aesthetically the same. I wanna do long pieces of bell peppers, long pieces of bacon. I mean, long pieces of bacon, long pieces of onions. Uh, everything's gonna be elongated. We want everything super symmetrical when we start plating and all that good stuff. Let's check this bacon really quick, make sure it's not burning. Doing fine. You don't have to babysit pasta, but I like to make sure everything's not sticking, so I have to come back to it again. That has been another couple minutes and keep moving it to make sure it doesn't stick together. All right, bacon's not quite done yet, so we're not gonna add those in there. Sit that on the side, roll along with our onions. Same thing with the bell pepper, the green one. Slice the top part off. And I'm using about, about a little more than a half, three quarters of a whole bell pepper is what I'm going for right now, guys. Top part's off. Take a little entryway right down, halfway down. Slice that little guy open. Oh yeah, baby, come on up here, there we go. Right, push that open. I'm gonna slice out these seeds. 
This is how you deseal the bell pepper. Be very careful. You want to get those seeds out of there. No one likes to eat the seeds of bell pepper. It's not really a waste. So I said about three quarters of a bell pepper, which means we do not need all this. So I'm going to take about this much out. Not using these pieces because that's too much. Nice long pieces. All right, guys. And then it's about a quarter of an quarter of an inch also, just like the onions were and other red bell peppers were. Check on that bacon. Let's see if we're ready to throw everything in there yet. All right. See how that bacon isn't like almost there, crispy, but still kind of like a little raw. This is a great place to start adding things. If you add things too soon when you're cooking bacon, the bacon will not crisp up. It'll just be like stringy. Uh, you get the flavor from it, but it won't be ready. You know, you want that crisp too when you add it to your pasta and you add it to whatever you're gonna add it to. All right, that's about ready. Let's throw the onions in there and everything else. Onions in here. I'm gonna break them up. Nice long pieces. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Bell peppers are ready. Toss those bad boys in there also. Turn that fire on medium, make sure it's very medium. I have those green bell peppers in there also. I got a whole little fiesta in a pot. Perfect. All right, guys, so we're gonna saute these down really quick with that bacon. Get these nice and soft and tender and full of that bacon fat and flavor. And we'll be right back once this is done. We're gonna start that shrimp next, okay, guys? All righty, guys, so as you can see, the onions are a little translucent there. That means you can see through them almost. They're not as raw. They still have a little crunch to them, and that's what I'm going for for my second dish. But for the pasta dish, I'm gonna let them cook a little longer. So I'm gonna separate those really quick, okay? And while that's working also, just see this. So the pasta is now done. It's just a little lighter in color, a little more see-through. If you taste the paste, you want it to be right to the teeth. Mmm, perfect. Check that out. All right, we're gonna strain that really quick. So I didn't cook it all the way through to where it's super, super tender, but I cooked it far enough because as you can see, it's still hot. It's gonna to continue to cook and get softer and softer over time, but it's just to the teeth. I'm gonna add a little oil to it. This keeps the pasta from sticking to each other as it sits and you wait until you know, you're ready for everything else. So I'll see about a tablespoon of oil in there. Keeps it nice and uh, moist and keeps them very like separated. As I mentioned, we will be doing two different dishes. So I'm gonna separate half the vegetables from my other dish. Put it on another plate. All righty guys, come back over here. So here I have about a cup, cup and a half of some jumbo shrimps, roughly about eight pieces. I'm gonna season them right inside the bowl. About a tablespoon of oil, but about a half, about a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic pepper from the garlic sauce. It's so about a quarter of a teaspoon of paprika, quarter of a teaspoon of chipotle, quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and some fresh cracked pepper. Toss this together, and we're gonna throw these right in the pot and get these sauteed, okay? Oh. So guys, shrimp generally takes a couple, a few minutes, not very long at all. You start seeing once they curl up together, once, once they get real tight and pink, that's when it's time for them to be coming off. All right, guys, as you can see, we did like a Cajun spice so they get nice and brown. They're just about done. And they're getting dry on the bottom of the pan where they're slightly sticking, but not enough for me to get a little scared. So what I'm gonna do now is called deglazing. I'm gonna deglaze that with some white wine. Some of that Chardonnay we used before I mean, for that lobster bisque. There's a little bit of that. Get a little flame going. And I did about a quarter of a cup of uh, Chardonnay. I'm gonna let that cook on a nice high temperature. Let that reduce just a little bit. All right, remember that crab bisque, guys? So I'm gonna add about two ladles, like a sauce here. Toss just like, well, later on and a half. We don't want too much salt. We want to toss that right in, and then I'm going to toss the pasta in with that also, okay? It's going to taste amazing, guys. This, as again, like I said, this is a great way to do things when you don't want to keep making a lot of dishes over the weekend or over the days or whatever. You can take that same biscuit, you eat it by itself. You can toss it in as a sauce. There we go, nice and saucy. And then we're going to throw these pasta just right on in here, okay? A nice toss, it gets nice and coated with everything. I'm gonna hit it with a touch of tarragon in a sec. And that's it guys, it smells so good. Hmm. So many flavors and everything going on guys, so many. 
All right, let's go back over to the main table, guys. Let's get everything plated. All right, first dish. Alrighty, get that quick wipe down real quick. And I love greens, guys. You should totally invest in some parsley. It's super cheap, and it makes all of your dishes like pop and come to life. Parsley, cement, they all do a really good job for this. There we go, guys. That's one pasta dish done there. All right, guys. So now that we got that shrimp nice and Cajun style, that the Chardonnay reduced a little bit, we're going to add about a ladle, maybe half a ladle of that crab bisque is for a sauce. Honestly, this sauce is, like, really versatile, guys. Like, you can do so much with this bisque. Like, you can do it as a sauce. You can do it as, like, a soup. You can do it as a garnishment. Whatever you want to do with it, you can. Like, the sky's the limit. Right. Well, while that's getting hot, let's get the plate ready for it. Like I said, this is going to be keto friendly. For those who can't, obviously you're not doing pastas, or if you have a gluten-free allergy, it's going to save you from having to do any glutens. All right, we're going to plate this accordingly. There we go, looks good. Just for plating purposes, guys, we're going to save those. Eat those on the side. That's definitely not garbage, okay? I freaking love cilantro. Who does not? So I'm gonna garnish with a piece, a few pieces of cilantro. Let's get some big pieces. There we go. Let's get some more sauce on our plate. There we go. If we need to add more, we totally can. All right, there we go, guys. We got two dishes there. One lobster bisque, and we got two dishes. Guys, these both taste amazing. One keto friendly, a little more healthier. One super healthy also, but if you don't keto, and the gluten free. All right, once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Dennis here, and I'm out.